Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. All right, shalom, most high in Christ. Bless, how y'all doing this day? This is Captain Ezra. And I'm Officer Amasai. And this is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm still doing this series on Fringe Check. And this particular fringe that I want to uh, focus on is going to be on lying. So that means there's a fringe on your garment right now that represents lying, represents falsehood. So that means that if you're paying attention to the fringes that you're wearing, that you would make that connection. And that means that now when you everyday walk, when you're out in public and you're doing whatever you're, you're dealing with the body or you're dealing with somebody in here, let's say, let's do it that way. And you know that you're about to fix your lips to say something that's not true. That fringe is supposed to remind you that I can't do that. Now, you may be put in a situation where you just don't want to answer because, you know, hey, you can always say, I don't want to answer that. I don't want to deal with that. But that's much better than just coming out with a lie. But let's deal with it. Let's get into scriptures. Let's start where we always start. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. This is the book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you used to go a whoring. That ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your God. So, and that's the purpose of the fringes. So we can remember and do all of the commandments. All of the commandments, not some of the commandments. All of the commandments. And that, because that's what happens, like, a lot of times you just see brothers and sisters, and they go out, like, that's one of the biggest things that's in Israel, period, is fornication and adultery. And they're doing it with fringes on. They got on fringes while they're doing it. Took the fringes off to do it, and then put the fringes back on when it was done. They're like, are you serious? That means that we are really not paying attention to these friends. It's just a fashion thing. It's we're doing it because the sisters doing it because they match their head wrap and outfit. Brothers doing it because they they want to stand out and look different. They think it look they they stand out from the other brothers in the street, or whatever reason they doing it. I have no idea, but they're not applying the scripture to it. So let's deal with this lion thing. Let's go to Exodus chapter twenty and verse sixteen. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. It says that we shall not bear false witness against our neighbors. That's, we are not supposed to do that as a people. We're supposed to be able to speak truth to each other and about each other at all times. So watch this. Go to Job, chapter 27, and verse 4. Let's get some more. And this is one thing, I, I'm going to just say this real quick, because we look at the scriptures sometimes, and which I'm going to get into it a little bit later into this, but we look at the scriptures sometimes, and we think that that applies across the board for everybody. But when you read the scriptures, and it's giving us a law, unless it says this is dealing with another nation, it's dealing with us dealing with us. So when it says that uh, uh, lie not one to another, it's talking about lie not one to another. It's not talking about Esau. It's not talking about Moab. It's not talking about Ammon. It's talking about, listen, you have to deal with each other the right way. Now, obviously, we still supposed to carry ourselves in a holy way, but we're going to get into it later. We'll see a little something on that. But read this. This is the book of Job, chapter 27 and verse 4. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So our tongue is not supposed to utter deceit. So sometimes people might say, well, I didn't lie. What, what you did was you may have omitted some certain information that made it look a certain way when you knew that the end result 
was going to be that that person was going to be deceived into thinking something that wasn't true. Meaning, I might not tell, somebody might not tell the whole story. Like, yeah, this and this, or something happened. And they just tell you a part of the story. And they, if they would have told the whole story, then you wouldn't have walked away deceived. But I'm quite sure this has happened to a lot of you. I'm quite sure you've been deceived just like somebody omitting certain facts. It's like that is also speaking with a deceitful tongue. So watch this. Let's get Psalms chapter 39 and verse 1. Psalms chapter 39 and verse 1. And these are the things we should be repenting from. From These are the things that we should be paying attention to our fringes about. We should be saying, let me make sure I'm doing better. Let me make sure I'm growing as a person. And you got a, a, a physical reminder that you put on your body every single day that's supposed to bring your mind back to where it should be if you're using them properly. Come on. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 39 and verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. So even while the wicked is before you, you said, I will keep my mouth with a bridle. I will control my tongue. I will make sure I'm sure about the th things that come out of my mouth. Even if, That's even in front of the wicked. So it means it's that much more in front of your brothers, in front of your sisters. But this is where we got to get to. This is where we change. This is where the scripture, the fringes come into play to help us change from who we were. That's a, this is a tool if we use it properly. So let's go to 1 Kings 13 and 1. Yeah, you got a tool that you put on, but you don't use the tool. It's like you're in construction, and you got a tool that, that, that will help you knock down the wall, but you want to do it with your fist. It's like you already got a tool right there, the tool. That might not be a good analogy, but, <laughs> but uh, read that scripture. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 13, and verse 1. Well, I hope them brothers ain't out there knocking down walls with your fists. <laughs> Go ahead. 13 and 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. Now, drop down to verse 7. So you got a, a man of the Lord that came out of, out of Judah. Let's see what happens to him. I don't know if anybody is familiar with this history, but he was sent by the Most High, and he gave him specific instructions on what to do and what not to do. And let's see what happened. Let's see what a lie caused to happen to this brother. Verse 7. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, mm -hmm. and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his son came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? And his son had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. So this brother came. He was given a message to get to the king. He gave his message. The king tried to get him to sit, get a reward, and eat with him. And he says, No, I can't do that because the Most High gave me a command not to do that. He said, Specifically, do not eat, do not do any of these things. I want you to get his message and I want you to leave. And that's it. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. And so far, he's doing good, right? But let's see what a lie does to him. So now you got this other brother that sees him and like, that's the man of the Lord. And he's pursuing after him. Let's see what happens. Drop down to verse 15. Verse 15. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. 
And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. But he what? But he lied unto him. So this so-called man of God lied to the actual man of God. And let's see what the end result is. Now, that seems feasible, right? You would think that, you know what? Oh, he said he's a man of the Lord, too. And an angel spoke to him and gave new instructions. Mm. Now, on the first guy behalf, he should have just, you know what, no matter what, the Most High gave me this commandment. The Most High is not wishy-washy. He's not going to go one way and then go back the other. He told you to do something he meant it. You stick to what he told you. But now the lie did what? Caused confusion. Come on. Verse 19. So he went back with him, and he did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. Mm. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him his the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone... A lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. So you see that his brother got put to death because the other one lied to him. And that's how dangerous it could be. It could be that simple. A lie can get people killed. That's why he told you don't bear false witness against your brothers. Don't lie one to another because it's that serious with the Most High. And the Most High knew that this good brother was going to lie to him. And he died to him and he got him killed. It's serious. Go to Leviticus 19.11. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 11. Ye shall not steal Neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. So we're not supposed to lie one to another. So, and I know the first thing somebody's going to be thinking, they're going to say, well, didn't Isaac lie to Abimelech when he said that Re uh, uh, Rebecca was his sister? Yeah, he did. He lied to him. But what did that scripture say again? Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely. Neither lie one to another. And so, nah, that's all we need. So now nah, let's get Genesis chapter 26 and 6, just so we can hit it. Because I know somebody already going to be thinking this one. There's other instances, but I want to go straight to this one. This is the book of Genesis chapter 26 and verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Lest said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. She was good looking. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how saidest thou, she is my sister. And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. So when Abimelech looked out the window, he, like, he just hell happened to look and he like, Wait a minute. The stuff he doing to her, that cannot be his sister. I mean, he grabbing stuff and doing all kind of stuff. Like, ain't no way in the world that's your sister. He like, no, nah, bruh, bruh, come here. <laughs> you said that was your sister. So he lied to Abimelech. 
But he lied because he, he felt like his life was in danger, and it was because that was obviously the way they moved. If you came through and you had a woman that they wanted, they would kill you for her and then take your woman. Oh, but they didn't feel like it was a threat. Why? Because you said, oh, that's my sister. No, oh, we don't care about you, then. We take her and we don't have to worry about you. So he like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you some other stuff. So go to Colossians 3 and 9. But you will never hear in the scriptures of the Most High punishing Isaac for this. Because that's not, that didn't have anything to do with what he told him to do. He says, lie not one to another. This is the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, mm -hmm. and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So this is what we're all supposed to do. We're supposed to, one, we shouldn't be lying one to another. Two, we should be recognized that we got a fringe on our clothing right now that represents not lying one to another. Because that's a law. That's a commandment. And then, on top of all of that, we should be trying to put on the new man. So that means, like we just read about Isaac, he had to tell a lie. That was to save his life. So guess what we should do? We should make sure that we're not being deceitful with our tongue. We should be mindful of our speech. And we should be making sure that we walk in worthy of the title of being the children of God. So we're going to end it on that. And with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.